You're not gonna watch this video, and I'm gonna explain why. The science behind creating a successful video is pretty well documented at this point. You basically have a title and a thumbnail that make people click, and then a video that keeps people watching as long as possible. There are lots of detailed steps people take to make those things happen. For thumbnails, for example, you really want clear, concise concepts, simple visuals, bright colors, expressive faces, basic things that all humans respond to. For titles, you want to convey emotion, create curiosity, and promise value in as few words as possible. To keep people watching, you need teasers, suspense, unanswered questions, quick cuts, lots of rapidly changing visuals, fascinating things to look at. Make them curious and never let them get bored. Exploit every possible aspect of human psychology to keep them fixated on the screen. And for all the complaining people do about that stuff, it's hard to deny that it's effective. It does work. If I make a crazy colorful thumbnail with a big YouTube face and some kind of crazy clickbait title, you're statistically more likely to notice it and click on it. You think you're not, but you totally are. And if this video had multiple quick cuts to different visuals with graphics and texts and effects every second or so, it would keep your brain stimulated long enough that you might actually keep watching. Increased watch time will tend to make YouTube recommend a video more frequently, so it's almost impossible to have a successful YouTube video without a ton of heavy editing. In fact, you're itching to click away right now. If I don't give you a dopamine hit every couple of seconds, you're gonna leave and go find a video that does. But I'm curious. I'm curious what happens if I do everything wrong. What if there are pauses in what I'm saying? Didn't that sound weird to you? An actual pause in a YouTube video? Do you know I edit my own breath out of my videos? Like if I say a sentence, take a breath, and then say another sentence, that's too long of a delay. I lose viewers when I take a breath. So when I'm editing, I have to look at the audio waveform to see the gaps where I took a breath and then literally just cut it out of there and disguise it with a transition or something so it looks like I don't breathe. So if I breathe or take a pause now, are you going to leave? Are you going to go watch whatever other addictive video YouTube's trying to recommend next? What if there aren't any fast cuts? No graphics, no text overlays. It's just you and me having a little chat. Is it killing you yet? Your finger's probably twitching, ready to jump to the next video. But instead of playing the usual YouTube game, I just want to try something different here. I'm going to give this video a boring thumbnail and a lame title, so my click-through rate should be super low. I might even make the thumbnail black and white just to take any fun out of it. I'll make no expression at all. Here, let's do it right now. Okay, that's gonna be the thumbnail. And I don't have a teaser. There's no crazy thing I showed you in the beginning and hold in reserve for another six minutes to keep you hanging around. There's no ticking clock, there's no hook, it's just me. On top of that, because I'm not talking in an excited, over-emotional way and I'm not doing a fast-paced edit with lots of cuts and overlays, my guess is that probably 60 to 70% of the people who started watching this video have left already. YouTube's gonna see the low click-through rate and low watch time and decide there's no way it's gonna keep recommending this video to people. It'll just die. The views will stop and never come back. Basically, I'm intentionally dooming this video to failure. I doubt this will ever see 400 views in its lifetime. The thing is, YouTube is fundamentally an attention platform. It's not about video. It's about people staring at the screen for as long as possible so YouTube can inject ads into their brains, for which they get paid very well. And I'm not actually complaining about that. That's been part of the business model for the entertainment industry for ages. Without commercials, there never would have been TV shows. The business is what makes the art possible. But the whole point of my channel, really, is to experiment. I'm not looking to be a famous YouTuber. I'm really just trying to understand how all this stuff works. Sometimes I'll do things I'm pretty sure will work just to confirm that they do work. And sometimes I'll try things that I'm pretty sure aren't going to work just to confirm that they don't work. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm making a horrible video just to test my assumptions about how a horrible video will perform. And now that I know nobody's left watching this, I can do whatever I want and not have to worry about it. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna show you some of the videos I was happiest to create that performed terribly. That seems to be consistent with the spirit of this video. And just to be clear, I'm not complaining about this. I understand why it happens. I'm just sharing because it might provide some insights into what works and what doesn't. 
These are things that I wish people had watched more of, but like this video, they just died. Here's one of them. I posted what I thought was a pretty interesting breakdown of the opening scene of Mad Max 2 and why it's one of the best opening scenes of all time. That video completely bombed. It was my second lowest viewed video of all time. Nobody wanted to see that. During the pandemic, like many of us, I was going crazy stuck inside and I finally got out and did some street photography at Arizona State University, which was closed at the time. It made me so happy to get out there and shoot. I loved it. I did a long POV video thinking it might be interesting not just to see the photos, but to see behind the scenes of walking around and trying to choose what to shoot and how to shoot it. But I was wrong. Nobody wanted to see that. I got out super early one day and shot a video about how to make better hyperlapse videos. I thought this was a great video because it had tons of good information, most of which I'd learned the hard way, and the lighting looked awesome. It was this pink and blue vaporwave kind of look. I was so happy with how this video turned out. It performed horribly. Nobody watched it. And this was a ridiculous one I did just for fun. Justin O'D Show posted a goofy question on Twitter. Be honest, do you think God actually wanted us to edit videos? So I did a video answering that question from a theological perspective. I thought it was cute and funny, but apparently nobody else did. And one of my very favorites was a video I did about sound design and color grading. I took a bunch of random stock footage and sound effects and pulled them together into a scene that felt consistent and connected. I thought it was some great editing. Check this out. All the source videos were silent, so everything you just heard was built up from scratch using downloaded sound effects. And all the video footage was totally different. It was different lighting, different colors, and most of it was originally in slow motion and I had to speed it up. It was such a fun exercise. This is some of the most fun I've had on this channel. And I explained all the details on how to do it, but there was nothing there. It was one of my worst performing videos. I did a detailed expose of a camera review channel that's completely fake and fraudulent and broke down the details to prove it. That was fun because I got to play detective. I thought maybe if I documented the proof and contacted YouTube about it, they might do something about it and the countless other scam channels like it. I realize in retrospect that was naive of me to assume. That channel is still up and going strong and YouTube has no problem pushing it into people's feeds because they make ad money on it. Meanwhile, this was another one of my worst performing videos. And one of the funnest days I had was when I recorded a vlog about a day I spent running around town performing video experiments as background research for future videos. It was one of the few times I've ever done a vlog style video and I was really happy with how it turned out. And it just so happened that one of the biggest fires in Phoenix history happened that day. So I changed my plans and headed over there to cover it. Even with a literal giant fire, it wasn't enough to get anyone to watch. And some other YouTube friends and I did a little competition where we used a predetermined folder of stock videos to put together a car commercial. I made mine for a Scandinavian electric off-road car company. Here, check this out. That was a super fun video editing exercise, and I really had to stretch and find ways to make that footage fit together consistently, and I'm happy with how it turned out. Obviously, almost nobody watched it. Ironically, the best performing videos on my channel are very often my worst videos. Like, I made a video about why people should consider buying one camera instead of another. I literally stood in a parking lot in bad lighting and talked at the camera. It was terrible and got almost 33,000 views. And I put together a video using the app Randonautica, which sends you to random locations. The idea was that you can use it to improvise ideas for a video. I didn't have any ideas, so that was a perfect concept. From a craft perspective, this was a terrible video. It was completely unplanned. I filmed it poorly. 
it got almost 50,000 views. I was getting so much random traffic from it that I had to hide the video because it was bringing in so many random people who didn't care about video stuff to my channel, which I think may have been hurting my other videos. YouTube looked at that and said, well, these people aren't interested in these videos, so those videos must not be any good. So I hid the video, one of my most successful videos. And then there was one I did about recent changes to US drone laws and the impact it might have on drone pilots. It wasn't a great video or anything, but it was during the pandemic at a time when I guess a lot of people had more time than usual to sit on their computers looking for things to criticize about the government. So I got all kinds of interesting characters coming in to watch that video. It got more than 200,000 views. And I eventually wound up unlisting that video as well because I got tired of deleting comments about how we should be publicly executing FAA officials. Basically, I didn't really like the top performing videos on my channel, and some of my favorite videos are the ones that wound up performing the worst. It's hard to know what to do with that. There's one viewpoint that says you should just do the thing you love to do and over time the right people will find you and you'll eventually build an audience. And that makes a lot of sense and it's probably right. By that philosophy, I should just keep making the videos I enjoy the way I like to do them and eventually the people who like to see those videos will see them and I'll eventually find the right community for the content I create. However, there's another viewpoint. That viewpoint is that if you don't play YouTube's game of optimizing your videos to be more addictive, they simply won't show your video to other people. That means you won't actually get the chance to build that community because nobody sees the videos. They don't get recommended. They don't show up in their feed. How are you supposed to find the right audience if your videos are getting buried before they ever see them? I don't know. I don't have an answer to that one. I don't know if anyone has an answer to that one except to experiment, to try different things. Play their games sometimes and not other times. See what works, see what you can get away with. Anyway, if you're one of the like three people who actually stuck around and finished watching this video, I really appreciate you. I hope you stick around because I'm gonna have lots of other interesting videos, ones that you'll probably like more than this one. This is the end.